the diameter of a tree is defined as the maximum distance between any two nodes of the tree for example in this tree the distance between node 8 and node 10 that is the length of this path is the diameter of this tree how do you efficiently find out the diameter of any tree some of you might already be aware of the classical algorithm that selects any random vertex performs a DFS and finds out the location of the farthest node suppose it is node 10 then it performs another DFS from this node and gets the location of the new farthest node suppose it is node 8 then the algorithm claims that this new farthest node that is the distance between these two nodes is the diameter but why does this classical algorithm even work how do you ensure that the initial choice of that random vertex does not influence the answer plus why do you even perform two dfs why was one dfs not sufficient and why did you not perform three dfs another question that you might ask is this classical algorithm will it still work if the tree contained weighted edges instead of non-weighted edges and if your answer is yes would you need to use bfs instead of dfs because now the tree has weights and if your answer is yes again then would you need to use a prior priority queue for bfs instead of just like a normal queue Another question that one might ask is given a random vertex in the tree how do you efficiently find out the distance of this vertex from another vertex that is maximized that is how do you find out the farthest node from this node. We will talk about all of these questions in this video. The classical algorithm for finding the diameter of a tree always bothered me. I could even prove why the algorithm was correct, but I did not have a clear understanding of why and how the algorithm worked. In fact, I was not even able to apply this concept to any new diameter problems that I encountered. That is until I stumbled upon this blog on code forces that had an image which made this idea click for me. I believe this is one of the best blog on code forces on this topic. It does a pretty good job of adding the formal proofs as well. I will link that blog in the comment section. You can take a look at it if you want to. However, in this video, we will focus on the visual proof. The main idea here is instead of trying to find out the algorithm to compute the diameter, we need to think backward that is assume that you already have the diameter and the endpoints of the diameter are node a and node b then let us arrange the nodes that lie on the path of the diameter in a straight line and then hang the entire tree on the diameter line so the structure that you see over here will have some unique and interesting properties the first property that you can notice is that this straight line distance will be the maximum distance between any two nodes. That is true by definition because this is the diameter. So that means that if you have a curved line that is if you have a path that starts anywhere goes up the tree and then goes horizontally and then goes down for example this curved path the sum of length of this curved path it might look bigger but this will actually be less than or equal to this horizontal line now you might try thinking of some complicated proof for this claim but i'll give you an elegant proof if this is the path let us take this vertical line and then move it and convert it to a horizontal line over here then take this vertical line convert it to a horizontal line 
then you will get a single horizontal line and then you can see that this is the maximum length of a horizontal line that is why this curved distance has to be less than or equal to this blue line otherwise you could have picked this as the diameter instead and then stretched it out over here stretched it out over here to make a bigger diameter so the fact is that this straight line is always bigger than or equal to all the curved lines that you can create but this idea of taking a vertical line and then converting it to a horizontal line of the same length is not something that is new you might have encountered it in physics wherein you have some potential energy and then you are converting it to kinetic energy over here that means that if you start from node b the maximum distance that you could go to the left is this horizontal line but what if you wanted to descend downwards in the tree so how much distance can you really descend downwards so from here you can see that this was the extra distance that you had remaining till you reached the next end point of the diameter so you can only descend this amount of distance that is it is clear that from node 4 you cannot descend a distance more than 3 because if it was a distance of 4 you could just flatten out this to a straight line and you could have gotten a bigger diameter so this kinetic energy gets converted to potential energy so for any node we know the maximum distance that we can descend downwards in the tree is equal to this length and just this fact is enough to prove all of the claims that we discussed at the start of the video let us talk about the first claim that is used in the classical algorithm that is if you select any random node and you perform a dfs then the farthest node that you would encounter will always be one of the diameter endpoint using the concept of kinetic and potential energy you can see why this claim is true suppose the randomly selected node is node 3 then if the farthest node that you get is one of these terminal vertices on this straight line then you don't have anything to prove so now suppose that the farthest node that you get is descended downward in a tree so suppose you go here and then you descend downwards like so but what is the maximum distance that you can descend so using that concept of straightening out that curve we have already discussed that the maximum distance that you can descend downward is equal to this kinetic energy which gets converted to this potential energy over here so this distance is equal to this distance therefore it, it doesn't matter if you select this vertex as the diameter endpoint or this because you can hang the tree on this diameter as well and nothing would change because the diameter of the tree remains the same so that is why this statement is always true then the second statement is that what if you want to efficiently find the farthest node the distance of the farthest node from any random node so we claim that the distance of this node will be maximum distance between the pre-computed diameter that you have so you compute this distance and you compute this distance and the maximum of these will be the answer so this statement partially follows from this but not 100 percent why does it partially follow because uh, this statement says that the farthest endpoint has to be one of the diameter endpoint and since we are checking both the diameter endpoints so we should not uh, worry right but that is not 100 percent true because what if uh, what if instead of instead of a and b you had a and c over here will the distance change you need to prove that it does not change for this claim to be valid and you can see that using the concept of kinetic and potential energy that it doesn't matter which diameter you have the distance will remain same because this distance is equal to 
this distance so therefore you can claim that for any node the diameter are the farthest endpoints and finally you can see uh, in the phase 2 of the classical algorithm we started efs from one diameter and then we claim that the farthest endpoint is the other endpoint of the diameter which is clearly true because if you start a DFS from this terminal vertex you will always hit this or you will hit this both of which are equivalent but will this algorithm still work if the tree had weighted edges instead of unweighted edges yes it will still work because if this edge had weight 4 you can simply replace this weight by adding 3 dummy nodes in between and then make all of these weights equal to 1. After you do this conversion for all the edges, you can clearly see that the concept of the diameter tree and the kinetic and potential energy that we discussed earlier that will still apply to this weighted tree after adding these dummy vertices. So that same idea should still work. But now that we have added edges, added weights to edges, do you think that DFS will not work and uh, we need to use BFS? But first let's talk about uh, when you use BFS to compute the distance between any two nodes. Will you need to use normal Q or will you now need to use priority Q? Right? Because these edges have weight. So it feels like that you need to use a priority Q. But that is not true. Even a normal Q would work why because there are no cycles in this graph so it doesn't really matter if you if you process this higher weighted edge first right because this is not Dijkstra's algorithm where you need to compute the shortest path between any two vertices because there is only a unique path between any two vertex therefore BFS will work yes and even with a normal Q it will work and of course DFS will still work because the weights doesn't really affect the path in between two vertex right because in a tree there is a unique path between any two vertices that doesn't visit a node more than once. So using the idea of that diameter that hanging the tree on its diameter you can solve this problem for positive edge weight trees as well. I will add some practice problems on this concept in the comment section below but for now you can try out these three problems on CSES you can try out tree diameter and tree distance one which is standard problems for this topic and on code forces there is a problem from a diff 3 round three paths on a tree which I was able to immediately solve after visualizing that image from the blog so yeah credits to the author and you can try this problem on your own and let me know your op approach in the comment section below. I will be adding all the code references as well on cfstep.com the link of which you can find in the pinned YouTube comments.